Buenas tardes, buenos días, buenas noches. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Chancleta Generation Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's so good to be back. I am Clemencia and I am the founder of Moyer Studio, an advertising agency that speaks to Latinos in the only way that they should be spoken to, which is authentically and very creatively. And um, just a piece of news here, our beloved dear queridísima Ceci will no longer be joining us at Chancleta. She had professional and personal commitments that kept her from giving it at all. This is in her own words. She was like, I can't give it all I got. Totally understandable. We had a heart to heart. We thought it was for the best. Maybe one day she'll be back so far. Um, we love you, Ceci. Besitos por allá donde estés. I hope you're doing awesome. And please listen to us. <laughs> However, like I said to Ramon, I'm fun. Our guests are fun. We're going to have fun. fun. We're going to have fun. So welcome. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to have fun. Yeah. So welcome to the beginning of our season seven. Oh, my God. Me siento vieja. <laughs> and <laughs> we have some awesome guests coming up this season and the very first one is mi querido Ramon Mucho gusto. hello hello gracias hello, thank you hello. for having me this is awesome well so I love Ramon because he is just like me he owns his own agency that also targets Latinos which is like It was so refreshing to meet you. We met each other at a conference. I'm like, we need to talk. Yes. So, yeah. So it's like, you know, one of the things that we that we agreed on was that we're not competition. We're like partners. We're here doing things together. We're trying to fight the same fight, you know? So it's like, okay, let's all be friends. Let's all be friends. And, you know, we I think and you and I met out of like a mistake I did. Uh, through the conference thing. <laughs> yes. And I think you remember that. I'm not going to go through with all that, but I, I may remember made a mistake because I was a, supposedly a vendor. Uh, and no, yeah. they wanted me to be something else. And Clemencia and I met in that way. And I was like, you know what? I love this, like meeting other fellow entrepreneurs and especially in the advertising space, especially working with the same yeah. community. You know, we're in the same track. I tell people, we're in the same track. And there is plenty of clients. We got specialties in so many different areas that as long as we do a really good job, I think we can help each other. So it's all good. I love it. I love that right. we, we're here to help each other. We, yeah, exactly. If we're not here to help each other, I don't know what the hell we're doing. Like, you know, <laughs> the, I think I think United we conquer. The, you know, they want us divided, fighting, you know, for scraps of whatever. Yeah. No, no, no longer fight the no power. Longer. No, All right. work together. All right, so um, if you want to know a little bit more about Ramon, I'm going to tell you more about him. So Ramon provides the branding, strategic, and marketing expertise to harness the power of a multicultural approach for his clients. Yeah. Yay. Ramon was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Huepa. And there's... Wepa, and then understands the importance of knowing the different cultures represented in our region and how to effectively build strong and meaningful relationships to elevate brands. Yes and yes. Thank you. Um, Ramon enjoys giving back and strengthening his community because it is part of his legacy building goal. And he is so involved with the community that I'm going to be here for 30 minutes reading all the boards and advisory boards and, and committees that he sits on. Oh. So we'll we'll just if you guys want it, we can put we can post it on Twitter. And uh, <laughs> and also Ramon is a Bob Jones University graduate, and he and his wife have a five-year-old daughter, Olivia, and a seven-month son, Callan. Callan, that's right. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. I'm excited. Excited to be here. Me too. So, surprise, surprise, we're not going to talk about advertising and branding. That's right. Um, That's right. Because, so we're actually going to talk about something that Ramon brought up, and it was so interesting to me because 
Um, at Chancleta, we've talked about this topic in different points of view, you know, from the youth, from professors, from the media, from advertising, which is like bilingualism, the, um, the power of identity through language, and also, you know, assimilation and, in, in, um, you know, not learning your language of your ancestry. There's so many nuances that we've talked about, but then we have not talked about it from the parent point of view. Like, Ramon, tell me, give me, give me the same, like, tell me the same thing that you told me when we were preparing yeah, for no. this, because it was Thank so you. awesome. Thank you. No, it is, it is a passion of mine about you know showcasing you know drive, giving back to our community but it's so important our families like our people like our families our kids and being bilingual you know it's such an important thing to give our kids and i was exposed very early to the opportunity to learn english in puerto rico my mom wanted that my mom said we, we got I, they, they need to learn english and so when I came to the state to study at university, was, I was meeting a lot of friends, a lot of people that are Latinos, or last name is Perez, or last name is something Latino, and they were just like, oh, but I don't know any Spanish. I wish my parents would have taught me Spanish, or I wish I would have picked up on this. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it was not just meeting one or two, it was meeting like, a, like plenty of them all the time. Like anywhere I went, even even going to Houston, I remember like meeting a, 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 a person that I thought spoke Spanish and he said, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. And he looked everything and I'm just like, I'm sorry. And I, you know, I'm not trying to, if anybody, and I know some people struggle with certain languages and certain things, but, but at the end of the day, I was just like, you know, I'm fourth generation and yeah, my parents speak Spanish, but I don't. So it's just like, for me, when my daughter was born, or was about to be born, I, I made an effort. I said, you know, I want for my daughter to know Spanish, but at least be exposed to bilingual or, you know, something in, in our, our, our Hispanic culture, our Puerto Rican culture. Because, you know, if I can mm -hmm. pass down anything besides my name, I want to pass down the ability to know, the, know another language and know who we are. And that's a such superpower. I was telling you earlier, it's a superpower, you know, mm -hmm. it's part of that, who you are. So that is my passion. And what then it translates to is I want other people to be able to do that. Like, I want other people to be like, how did you do it? Because then I have people ask me now, she's five. She understands 100% what I say. And that is really cool from going from like newborn to five year old and see like that she understands everything I say it is hard work. But I tell people it's like, you can do this. And that's been sort of a passion because people were asking me, how did you do it? And I could talk about it for days about it. Oh my God, there's so many. So I'll start with some personal experience, you know, I, I grew up in, you know, in Florida and, you know, I did meet some uh, friends of mine in high school that didn't know how to speak Spanish and they told me that their parents they didn't teach them Spanish on purpose because they wanted for them to learn English without an accent and all of that um, but then I've also you know as I've grown up and now I'm in that age that you know my friends have children yeah. they tell me like oh but it's so hard to teach the kids like you know my partner doesn't speak Spanish and like I have to like make an extra effort I'm so busy I have another kid blah blah blah, blah. and and I'm always like hey I'm never gonna judge you on you know on the upbringing of your children obviously but yeah oh my god it's so important um not, not just like connecting with your, you know, with your family, uh, like la, la abuelita and, you know, <laughs> yeah. the people back home. Yeah. And um, so that's really important. But also, you know, being bilingual right now is, like you said, it's a superpower. It's a, it's a really strong asset to have professionally and, uh, and, and it's especially yeah. nowadays. I mean, Spanish is there. Yeah the second most spoken language in the world. I mean, you could yeah. like go and work in like all of South America and Spain. Like this is like, you yeah. have a lot of international opportunities, not just here in the US. Yeah. So, you know, it's so important. And, but it's like, I hear so many obstacles that people are finding in teaching their children Spanish. I don't know, if, do, do you mind sharing some of these obstacles yeah. that people have told you? 
Yeah, I and mean, you're right. I mean, they're, 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 we as a world have come much closer now with technology. You know, that's the other thing. It's just this is not anymore. You know, we're here and they're there. And now, you know, you you got other countries at least have another lang- another language. At least they're learning some other language and. And other countries know English, but other countries also learn other languages. And why should it? Why couldn't we? Yeah. But anyway, I think the point here is this. I'm talking, I'm going to be speaking to, I want to speak to you, who you are a working professional, entrepreneur. Yeah, you might be the only one that speaks Spanish in your house. Maybe you speak a little bit of Spanish, understand a little bit of Spanish. But if you have a desire to say, you know what, I want my children I want it to, mm-hmm. look, to to be exposed to that at least. I will tell you right now, the, the first thing you need to do, and I was thinking a lot about this, is like have the right mindset. It's like I can, I can tell you all these different things, but if you don't have the right mindset of saying, you know what, I'm committed to at least getting my kids or my children or, or be bilingual, get in the right mindset. Mm-hmm. That's what I did early on in the beginning. When Olivia, even before Olivia was born, I said, you know, I want her to be bilingual and I am somehow I'm going to teach her what I know about Spanish, what I know. And, you know, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican Spanish is not the perfect Spanish, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but what? It's Spanish. that's OK. It's still Spanish. It's still like a way to learn. And then, you know what happened? You know, when you buy a car, like like you see a car, you're like. Ooh, I like that car and I like the color and like everything and I don't see that many I'm gonna, you know, and then when you buy it guess what you start seeing it everywhere you start seeing yes. like that same car <laughs> yeah, like, totally. wow, right here, right? it finds you the same thing I tell people is like if you're thinking about if you put yourself in that right mindset being bilingual whatever that is just start whatever step that is and just know like this is what I want you're gonna start gravitating toward all those things And that doesn't have to be Spanish. You know, I tell people if it's French, if it's Chinese, if it's this, it's okay. Just being bilingual, trilingual, just multiple languages, like it's a good step. And I just tell people, be in that right mindset. That's the first thing I say. Be in the right mindset and say, you know what? I want my children or to those that are around me, I want to influence them in a way that let's be bilingual. Let's suppose them to at least be bilingual and to learn it. I was different. I just said, you know, I want my daughter to really know Spanish. Like that was my thing, you know? And so that was my goal, you know, get her to, and all of a sudden everything comes back to it, come to that. So yeah. that's the first step is being in the right mindset. If you're not, it's really not going to work out. It really won't, yeah. it won't go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, I mean, maybe, you know, a way to maybe get into the mindset is think about like the future, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, the future of your kid, you know, I like I said, in my experience, knowing grown ups that are feeling so sad about their parents not having taught them Spanish, you know, they're like, <clears throat> I've even spoken to people that are like, well, now as an adult, I'm getting into Spanish classes to try to connect with my culture more or like or, or people telling me like, oh, you know, I just don't feel like Latina or Latino enough because I don't speak Spanish or I don't really feel, you know, it's 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 yeah. obviously not a necessary thing to connect to your culture, but it's definitely something that it does connect you to your culture. Yeah. It's not yeah. necessary, but it's a, but it's a way to connect. And so, you know, just thinking about, you know, how maybe you're like most of the kids that did not learn Spanish at home, they they tell their parents, like, why didn't you do this? Like they yeah. actually like feel yeah. like regretful about it. And yeah. um, and there's a there's a sense of shame too around it, like, oh you're Latino, you don't speak Spanish. Like obviously that that shouldn't happen, but at the same time, you know, it's really a way to you know, keep your culture yeah. alive to fight assimilation, to fight, you know, this this sentiment of like keeping us all the same. Yeah. You yeah. know. It's I, keeping it's keeping who you are. Yeah, exactly. You were talking about shaming, you know, there was a good article, I think the Pew Hispanic put out there that we as like bilingual Latinos, we shame we're shaming other Latinos who don't know any any Spanish and I yeah. say right now please yeah. stop that if you're a Latino and you know Spanish yeah. you should, please stop that because that is not helping this cause it's not helping what we're trying to do my at least in my end when I meet someone who knows very limited Spanish 
and their last name is Vasquez. You know what I mean? And I'm just here. You know what? I encourage them. I, I say, here's a book. Here's this. Here's this technique. Here's that. Um, how can we? I can help you. I will speak Spanish to you. And then even if he can't catch that word or her, I'll help her like mm -hmm. find it. You know what I mean? Like I'm literally teaching and that's like my passion. It's like, so please let's stop shaming. I understand we like, no, like no vacilamos uno al otro. I know we kid around with each other and I get it. Like we do that and that's the point. But know that that third generation Latino or fifth generation Latino, whoever, you know, they do struggle with that. Even they may not show it, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I, at the heart, they'll show that. And I said the same thing. Like, I remember coming over here and people were saying, you have a weird accent. You have a funny accent. Mm -hmm. And I was very conscious about that. And I remember one gentleman, he, he spoke Spanish here. And I saw to him, it's like, listen, my accent is very thick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still learning, you know, all this. And he said, you know what, Ramo, don't be ashamed of your accent because your accent shows your intelligence like what do you mean it's like you know two languages right it's like yeah yeah that is that for you to know two languages it separates you out already and from then on i've learned to really pivot and just look like oh yeah it is different it is like you know i am smart because i know two languages or i, I am smart and so i encourage even un americano even if you're an american like don't any and you learn a little bit span a little bit spanish talk 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 practice it talk to us like it's a sign of respect it's a sign that you want to know who we want to do what we are and mm. like i said i i'm here because my mom had the same mentality my mom said you need to learn english for to open your world open more capabilities and that's the reason i'm here all my cousins who didn't learn any english they're in puerto rico it is very rough it is very very hard to live in puerto rico and to get out mm -hmm. knowing very little English is very is very hard. We can learn it, yes. As an adult, learning a language is really difficult. Super hard. It's yeah. very, very difficult. So, As children, it's just so much easier. I mean, yeah. yeah. And also, like my brother, my brother came here with me, and he was almost four, and oh, now wow. he speaks both English and Spanish, no accent. So yeah. like this whole worry of you know, Correct. oh, if yeah. I teach them Spanish, they're going to speak with them. My brother does not have an accent. People cannot tell that he is from anywhere because he sounds like, you know, yeah. he has an American accent. He lives in he lives in the South and like he doesn't have a, a Southern accent, but he he does not speak with a yeah. Spanish accent at yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. I know a pastor uh, who his wife and them, their kids know Spanish, Japanese, French, and in Spanish, and I've heard. And I, I went to the, I went to their house just to see, like you know, the accent was. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear his accent. I just heard like, like just just like the Spanish English, Spanish English, Japanese, French. Like it was it was amazing for me to know that. And so it is doable. So again, going back to yeah. being the right mindset, right? Being the right mindset today. Commit yourself if you've been struggling. If you've been struggling just to like do this, just first of all get yourself down and say okay what is it that i'm trying to achieve at least a little bit and is it, that is being exposed to a language get your children or whatever it is to be exposed to even to yourself that alone is the is half the battle the rest is what i want to talk about the rest of the time but that mindset is again is super important to know um to get going so yeah yeah and it's just like i guess i mean i don't have children on my own but um, I guess it could be just like teaching the kids, like, you know, the colors yeah. in English. You also say it in Spanish. Like, <laughs> this, goes, this yeah. is, this it's is like, red, yeah. rojo, <laughs> blue, azul. <laughs> so it's just like, it's just like I say an extra word. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's and, I, and even for people like, and, and I tell people, you don't have any children. Well, you know, you know what? You have cousins, little cousins. You may have little nephews. You may have people that influence, like other other families that yeah. you influence. It doesn't have to be like your children. It can be other family yeah. members who are, who reach out to me. They've told me like, can you come and like do a little bit of tutoring or or do a little bit of this or or speak to them? I and I I love that because again, I know the end result is gonna be a massive. Um, change for their lives 
and I want yeah. that. For them. You know, I really want that for them. So anyway, so that's yeah. a little bit of like the mind. And it's like right you here. don't really need to, and you don't need to pay a tutor. Like you can get a yeah, exactly. Like you can get your cousin and your tia or your you know your mom to be like, could you call them on the phone and talk to them in Spanish just yeah. to make sure that you know it's still like you know, fresh in their minds. You know, I know that some people can't afford tutors or putting their kids in bilingual schools, but you know, it's it, 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 any way that you can, I think that, you know, if you just said a little bit creative, it's, it's possible, yeah. right? Well, yeah, and that's what, you know, when I put myself in the right mindset, that's why I started saying, okay, all right all of a sudden i'm thinking oh okay so what are these allies that's the first thing i tell people it's like what are you, who are your allies around you right who are those allies that can support you in this endeavor that you're trying to do even even my wife who doesn't know speak spanish at the beginning now she really understands and really can speak it i was very surprised the other day she was able to read in spanish and i'm like oh wow because she's heard it already so many times i mean it's been five years and she's hearing it so you know, even that notion of like how finding allies that can support you in this endeavor will be key. Yeah, you're going to have some who be like, well, you really can't. Don't listen to that. Be focused on what you're trying to do. So the first thing I tell people is like, find those allies who can really help you with this. He can be, like you said, it could be your cousin. In my situation, is my parents. You know, my parents are still around here and they help a lot in that conversation. And in the beginning, it was a little bit hard, but I said, in Espanol, tell them in Spanish, ask them in Spanish, in Espanol. And now it's like automatic. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I got friends who speak Spanish, who their kids also speak Spanish. And I said, can we be around that? Because we want to be around that. So like boom it's like an ally so i tell people it's like find those allies who can really support you in your endeavor and you know get involved like there's so many community there's so many good like hispanic community groups out there like why can't you get exposed to that why can't you bring your child to that or, or bring you even yourself whoever that is like bring that to yourself like be part of that to know but find those allies and that's going to be like the first step right there of finding those allies that can help you you know mm. yeah and also i mean um the, there are either non-profit organizations or churches or things like that that have activities in spanish for the kids like yeah you know i remember here in boston they had like a puppet show in spanish they had book readings in spanish you know that are like on saturdays or on sundays at, at different communities that you know that's also a way yeah. of you know to connect with with yeah. uh, the language without you necessarily sitting down yeah. and being like a teacher and all yeah, which exactly. i think that's, that's like what everybody thinks is gonna be like, like, oh, I'm gonna have to sit down with this board and like write things and, you know, give them like a, you know, it's like they, they feel like they have to like yeah. take the time out and like teach. When like sometimes it's just conversational, it's just, you know, yeah. Yeah. talking to them in Spanish. And, they like, and they'll yeah. figure it out, they'll figure out what, they're, what you're yeah. saying. I, I never, I never <laughs> did, I never like, aspire to be a teacher in that sense you know i never thought about like oh let me just you know i gotta follow this curriculum and do this that you know trust me like they will that, that will come but for now in the beginning uh or now in this first stage that you're in but like how old or what you know like you said like just start the conversation right start the mindset uh, you mentioned libraries like you, it's crazy how when you start that mindset right all of a sudden you're like you know what? Let me see what the library has. You know, and all of a sudden it's like I found like yeah. they have every Friday they have Spanish bilingual a story time for the kids or for like stuff. That's and I started awesome. going, and it was phenomenal because it was just like my daughter like got to hear other people speak Spanish, not just me, and she ever got to like interact with other kids in that level. Uh, and just like all of a sudden it's like those activities like you mentioned like finding those activities start all this all of a sudden start popping up and those allies i got friends now who know what i'm doing they send me stuff they're sending me things all of a sudden it's like hey did you see this did you see this um oh, I, you know that's another good awesome. one, you know another good one i found again right mindset was board games i couldn't believe like i will say this we do lack bilingual or spanish board games like board games come in english but i was able to find bilingual board games like there was a bingo game that i played with my daughter in spanish that we just it's all spanish words and it, it says you know how to pronunciate it 
and again interacting like yeah. with your child with using games like board games that are that way find you can find those like very easily uh and again you know i get it that we're like latinos being busy we're entrepreneur and we just don't have time you can find time you know you know how much time you need for this it's like i tell people it's like if you spend like 10 to 20 minutes a day with this you're gonna make a huge difference and that's like that's nothing in a in a for a child that's mm-hmm. like the world and so if you could just do that you change your lives and you change your own life on it so you, those are a few things that i'm starting to realize and tell people it's like find those things you know yeah and you know you just said something really interesting which was like you change your own life and it's also like this um you know going back to what i was saying before this mental um uh like this mentality of like my language isn't important enough you know yeah. or like my and the, the language of my ancestry or my culture isn't important enough to be to for it to be passed down to yeah. my children like Maybe maybe it's not like the front of mind mentality, but maybe it's just this mentality that we've been forced to like we, we've been force fed it. Yeah. And it's like, no, our language is important enough to pass down. It's important enough for the children to learn it. It's important enough for us to connect with them with it, to for us to connect our kids and our future generations to the past generations, to their history, to the rich culture that we have. It's not that, you know, because we migrated, we're completely going to forget about it and lose it. It's yeah. worth celebrating and remembering and honoring it and, and perpetuating it because, you know, otherwise, what are we going to do? We're just going to let it just, you know, yeah. fall apart. Like, fall apart. you know, this this. This is what this is what we have. This is what we're made of. Yeah. It's like it's who we are. You know, I, I had the same thing with my a friend of mine that I told him like, oh, I'm gonna go to coaching classes to try to get rid of my accent. And he's like, what are you talking about? Your accent is, is who you are. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I never heard anyone say that to me. <laughs> and it's true. It's who that we is, are. Oh, I love that. Oh man. You know, I still I've still I've come across communities in the United States where, for example, like a big German like population has come and moved and migrated for, like for 200 years and they still speak German in that in that community. They still they still give that back. They still like pass it down. And and so I tell people the same thing, like, you know, if you're passing down like for us Latinos, like cooking recipes are a huge thing. I remember like Friends say, oh, me, no, me, tia, or me, abuela, or me, mama, this is her, the recipe, and I make it. And that's great. That's a good, like, thing to pass down. Uh, and, and I equate the same thing now for me. Like, I, I have recipes that my mom would give, me, give me that I'm, I'm using, but my biggest thing right now is, like, how can I pass down my language? How can I pass down el español that I know that, no Puerto Rican at least, but algo español, they will know, like, it's a Spanish language that they know. So, um, yeah you know that's just kind of thing so one thing you mentioned about like the teaching and all that stuff you know what's interesting was i I started thinking a lot about like this ipad technology thing everybody was like you know thinking it's like oh the kids you know now have ipads well okay you know what they're eventually they're gonna use it you know they're gonna need that i started looking at again i was in that mindset of like okay i want them to be exposed bilingual so how can i change this mindset all of a sudden i started looking at it as a tool to say, you know what, what apps are what apps are out there that are game that are sort of a gamification, but that speak Spanish or teach them by by cultural. And I I I will never forget the the one that I have is like it's called a Spanish school bus. It's like a Montessori kind of style, and that was like the first ever app that I used to sit down with my daughter, and it goes like stages of things right so if we, if we do the numbers or numbers we you know it, it, it does this this Montessori type style that I love and and I think to be honest that was the first ever structure that I ever did with her to learn like a bunch of a bunch of things that I they're kind of hard to teach because you know not every day is this or every day is that like there's a few things that I wanted to like her 
for her to see and think. And so all of a sudden I started seeing the 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 app, you know, the the iPad as a tool. Then all of a sudden I was thinking, well, what about Netflix? Or what about Disney Plus? What about these things? Guess what? I turned yeah. those, I flipped those things into Spanish. Like I I literally went into the language setting of my daughter's like a uh, profile and said everything is gonna be in Spanish for her. And then so we, she watches everything in Spanish, Netflix. Uh, oh Disney Plus. So I find all those things for her to be exposed because they're going to be times that I'm not there all the time. But guess what? If she's watching it for 30 minutes, an hour, whatever that is, like they're doing the iPad. Hey, you know, she can, she at least is seeing some stuff that is in Spanish. Um, you know, you and I talked That's earlier. That's awesome. About- Jorge and I mean, yeah, and Netflix, there's a lot of uh, Spanish content. Oh, yes. And I'm sure there's like Spanish cartoon stuff. Oh, there is. It was dubbed in Spanish, but it's good. Like it's Latin America Spanish. Like there's a, like Jorge Curioso, Curious George. I tell people, it's like my daughter knows Curious George as Jorge Curioso because that's how she grew up. Jorge Listen Curioso, that's uh, so Poco cute. Joe. I love Poco Joe and Poco Joe is actually... From, from yeah. like uh, derived from like um, like a Spanish, I think it's Spaniard. Like I know it's 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 actually Spanish. Yeah. Like first, Bluey. People ask me all the time. Blue, Bluey is in Spanish, and I'll tell you, like I enjoy Bluey more in Spanish than in English. It's funny, but I enjoy both. But you know, <laughs> like you really get to see those things, and like again, it, it, look at things as a tool. I start thinking, it's like how can these things help me? Like how how can all these yeah. things like help me to expose them? to another language yeah. and so uh so again or like, like listening to music in spanish in the car oh man don't get me started now about that <laughs> <laughs> like I, mean, I, have, I have a playlist of spanish songs for my daughter like th- these are like a playlist of all a bunch of other songs like poco yo in spanish like you can find it that's the thing about it it's like when I started searching, like, there's a few things that I'm like, holy smoke, there's a whole world here that is in Spanish. I was telling you about the podcast, like what we're doing now. Well, um, I, my daughter and I love uh, uh, Cuento, Cuentos Increíbles by uh, so, so, Sonoro. I love their production, mm-hmm. high quality production stories in Spanish for 11 minutes, 12 minutes. And guess what? I do it from the time I get on my car from my house all the way to take her to school. In that time frame, she's listening to a Spanish language, you know, like story. And I ask her, like, what do you think about the story? What do you think about this? And she loved it. She loves it. Like, and she will tell you, like, su favorito es dos gatos, you know, do, el, el gato con botas. You know what I mean? Like, or oh, el juncho. Or el juncho. She knows about el juncho, which I never heard, but she has, you know. So, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, <laughs> but it's like those things I tell people. It's like I think is I think what we get paralyzed is, well, what are those? So I'm sharing with you some that I that I vet it that I love that I think people should start at least somewhere, and those are pretty good, you know, sp- starting points, you know, discussion. But yeah, these are great tips because I think what everybody thinks is that this is a burden. And it's um, and it's like extra work for people. And I know, like from what my friends tell me, you know, having children is not easy, and it, you know, it makes your life even busier. Um, but yeah, but so all the tips that you share are kind of like, hey, you know, yeah. just do whatever you were doing before, but in Spanish. You know, exactly. it's just like that. Like. Oh, you were listening to music yeah. in the car? You, you can listen to music in the Spanish. You were yeah. watching cartoons? You can watch the cartoons in Spanish. You know, you... It, so it's like all the different... You, you were going to, you know, kids events in on a Saturday? Go to a Spanish kids event. So it's yeah. sort of like just do the same thing that you were doing before, but just but do it in Spanish. I, I put it this way, you know, we, we f- I feel like we look at our lives as, like silos, right? Here's my career, here's my this, here's my family time, here's my me time. And all of a sudden, I actually started seeing where's the overlapping here, right? Where's the overlapping to the stuff that I'm doing already? You know, things like that, that I can say, this can be in Spanish, this can be in Spanish, this can be in Spanish. Mm-hmm. And like, it's that overlapping area where I tell people, it's like, that's where you find those things. Like, I, I'll take my daughter to work sometimes, and yeah, I interact things in Spanish. I'll take her to my volunteering events, and 
guess what? You know, we're in, you know, we're doing Spanish. Um, I, I want to share, I will share this. We're, we're talking about overlapping. I'm part of, um, I'm part of a board. Uh, it's called, the festival is called Fall for Greenville. It's one of the biggest festivals in South Carolina, 200, 200,000 people. We have about 1,800 volunteers, 1,800 volunteers that we have to manage, about 2,000, right? And one way that I overlap what I do with bilingual, I was thinking, well, with volunteers, are there any of them that speak another language? So you know what? In the process of like, of, of the application, I was able to put in with the city, you know, we work with, I was able to put in and say, um, if you speak another language, you know, click here and tell us which one. You, you, you're not gonna know what happened. Out of the 2000 volunteers, we identified 18 different languages. There were 18 different languages and about 700 people identify themselves as a, as a bilingual. And all of a sudden now we were able to tell people, show them in their badge that they were wearing that I, I speak this language or I speak this language. I was so proud of that moment because I, again, that helped me see that when I overlap what I do and what I'm thinking, it, that helped me uncover something that nobody knew. Nobody knew like, and they were, everybody was so happy to, to be able to use that skill. And that's the same thing I tell people, it's like use that skill, that superpower, because it's gonna take you so many different places. I'm t- that's what I'm trying to do with my daughter. Like, t- t- and now I have a son and guess what? He, sh- my daughter is teaching my son <laughs> in Spanish. Like it's awesome to hear him Aww, speak. And that's so, so cute. So that's the thing about it. When Yes, we're busy, life is busy, having kids is busy, but try to find overlapping, try to find places where it's a teaching moment where it, it can be. What is that? Okay, eso, papa, un árbol. Oh, que es un árbol. You know, like there's just again the, by having the right mindset takes you there. So that's kind of yes. a little bit there on that. And I love that. I love that your kids are not connecting with their um, heritage and their language that they you know of their father. And so that's so cute. Yeah, thank you. Honestly, I know. I, I love it, but I, I, I'm telling you, it's um, it's an amazing, it's been an amazing experience. It's been an amazing journey. And at the end of the day, I've, I've come to really enjoy just just helping people to be exposed to this and help helping other Hispanic families, other Latinos who are there, or even those that are not Latinos who are still want to learn another language. How do you expose mm-hmm. that? How you give that? And at the end of the day, you know, read, read to them, right? Reading in Spanish. It's going to be key. Uh, I read to my daughter every day. Uh, I try to every day and we just, we try to do everything I try to do. I try to incorporate Spanish into it. So Yeah. I mean, the, the English is already going to be taught in the school. Oh, yes. You know, they're going to be interacting with people in English, you know, learning English and, you know, the grammar and spelling and all that stuff. So the English is already there. Like my parents... You know, they always spoke to us in Spanish at home. Yeah. And whenever we would try to answer them in English, they'd be like, eh, eh in Espanol. Espanol. <laughs> you know, they were like, oh, I, I, yo no entiendo, yo no entiendo, I don't understand. So it's like whenever me or my brother would say something in English, be like, mom, mama, she'd be like, yo no entiendo, I don't understand. <laughs> I did the same so it was thing. Kinda like, I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we were when we were like you know yeah. older, like twelve or like fifteen, that we were like yeah. you know trying to be all rebellious and like you know talk to him in English. My mom be like, "Yo no sé, yo no sé." I do lo mismo. I told my daughter like, "¿Cómo fue en español?" No entiendo. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? And there's times that you know, and and you're right. They will learn English. My daughter knows very good English. She speaks it very well. Yeah. Um, but I will tell this, I'll tell this to people that maybe they're starting this journey, maybe have kids um, that are young, very young, I'm talking to infant or one, they, they will probably, uh, this happened to my daughter, she, Spanish was the first language she actually spoke in the sense of like, as a, as a child. So mm. that was that was actually a challenge. Obviously, my other family members who don't, they didn't speak any Spanish were like very concerned. It was like, this girl is not going to learn any English. Well, fast forward, uh, she's in K4 and she speaks very well. She speaks very well to English. And yeah, it, it, it does take time for them to think about a word. But trust me, if you're listening, to, uh, trust me, it's going to be by stages. They're going to learn that. They're going to learn like all of a sudden now my daughter's like interpreting for, for me. Like she will tell 
you know, some of the, oh, he said this in Spanish at the park. They're like, oh, I got to go in five minutes. That's what my dad said. You know, like, like just she's doing those <laughs> things because she's learning, but it'll be for stages. Like translating. Yeah, translating is it's funny. Um, and I... That's so cute. I just, I just love it. But um, I don't know. I just... You know, I I kind of structure it. I kind of structure it that way. And you know, if things get very serious, and you really want to find, you know, find a school that teaches bilingual or something Spanish, yeah. um, encourage that, push yeah. it. Um, if there is a curriculum, I got a friend who has a little curriculum that you can get on Amazon and and start teaching that. You know, and get going. So it's just it's just take it one step at a time. Don't 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 overthink it. Just take it one step at a time and, and see what happens. You never know. And yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, if a busy Latino entrepreneur can do it, you can do it too. Yeah. I can. <laughs> Not too. Yeah. 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 So um, thank you so much for sharing all these insights. I hope it was helpful for the community. You know, we're always looking out for you guys. Always. So if you... Um, Ramon, if they want to get in touch with you, where can they get in touch with you in case that they have more questions? Yeah, no, um, you know, my email will be the best start, you know, um, it's R R Nieves at UMG dot agency. I'll give that out there. Uh, I, please, happy to connect and happy to talk. I don't mind like helping you. I know people have different situations, but if this is what you want, if this is what you really want to get your kids exposed to, Let's do it, right? Let me help you help you with things. How to uh, maybe overthink a few things. Maybe there's something I haven't think uh, that you haven't think of that I have, and that can help you. Uh, but it's not really rocket science. But it's 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 just thinking a little bit more beyond that. But if it helps, again, it helps you think about overlapping, right? What you do and that part look for those things so if you're in the car and you're listening already to things okay how can i put things that they can listen in spanish that i can listen yeah. to spanish let's do it yeah. you know cambiar so, el chip. yeah cambiarlo. Cambiar so. el chip. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing all of this um and if you need to get in touch with ramon we can post it on our socials and um he just told us his email and to get in touch with us also if you want to get in touch with ramon you can get in touch with me um our socials we are on the instagram and the x and the tiktok chancleta jen on the x and chancleta generation everywhere else and i am clem at chancletageneration.com If you like this podcast episode, give us a rating, let me know, and we'll make more. We'll make more of whatever you guys think will be important to make. Um, Ramon, thank you so much. This was so awesome. Oh, I hope so. It's such an interesting topic. topic. (laughs) It is. It is a different, it's an interesting topic, but one that I don't want people to miss. Like, yes, you know, pass it down. Pass that down. Yeah. It's... It's also so awesome to talk to, you know, someone that is so passionate about something. I love it. You know, it's it's awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, I will talk to you soon because we're always talking anyway. (laughs) Para (laughs) chimosear. And thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. We will see you in two weeks. Now it's two weeks. Ciao.